Thank you. And the next item of business is the final stage of the Department's Bill, and I call Junior Minister Pengelly to move the final stage and open the debate on the Bill. Minister. I beg to move that the Department's Bill do now pass. This is a very short Bill, consisting of only three clauses and two schedules. Yet it is a Bill that will have significant implications for the way our institutions do business in the future. In moving the Bill at second stage, I spoke about how, at the heart of the Stormont Agreement and Implementation Plan document, a fresh start, there is a common commitment to a better way of doing business together. One of the ways the agreement aims to achieve this is by progressing the reduction in the number of departments from 12 to 9 in time for the 2016 Assembly election. Of course, reform of the structures of government here has been an issue for a long time. In 2012, the Assembly and Executive Review Committee produced a report on the reduction in the number of departments which identified areas of commonality broadly comparable to the departmental restructuring now being put in place. The policy proposals underpinning the bill were the subject of detailed consideration during the process that led to the Stormont House Agreement in December 2014. That agreement determined on a nine-department model to be established in time for the 2016 election, with the future allocation of departmental functions to be agreed by the parties. The Executive discussed departmental restructuring on several occasions in early 2015 and decided on the names and responsibilities of the future departments. Those names are reflected in the current bill. In a statement to the Assembly on 2 March 2015, the First Minister announced the decisions that had been reached by the Executive on the new departmental structures in consequence of the Stormont House Agreement. He set out a future model of nine departments with all the powers, functions and services of the current 12 departments. The allocation of responsibilities was further refined during the talks process which led to the publication of a fresh start on the 17th of November 2015. A fresh start offered a way forward on a range of challenging issues and enabled us to look forward to a period of greater cooperation. In relation to institutional reform, it reaffirmed the commitment to reduce the number of departments from 12 to 9 in time for the 2016 Assembly election and provided greater clarity on the functions uh, of the nine future departments. It also committed to having a departments bill introduced in the Assembly by the end of November 2015. In fulfilment of that commitment, the Department's Bill was brought forward for introduction in the Assembly on the 30th of November 2015. Its purpose was to create a statutory framework for the new model of nine departments. It sets out the names of the future departments and made necessary changes to the Department's Northern Ireland Order 1999, which provides the basis for the current departmental system. However, important provisions of the 1990 Order on the legal status of Northern Ireland departments generally and on the exercise of their functions were not affected by the Bill. As I said earlier, it is a short Bill, now consisting of three clauses and two schedules. Clause 1 renames seven existing departments and dissolves three departments, DEL, DECAL and DOE, as required to establish the new structures. There is no reference to the Departments of Education and Justice, which are not affected by the Bill. It applies the Department's Northern Ireland Order 1999 to the new set of nine departments. Clause 2 references Schedule 2, which contains essential repeals. Clause 3 gives the title of the Act and the arrangements for the commencement of Clauses 1 and 2 on a day or days to be appointed by the First Minister and Deputy First Minister. Clauses 1 and 2 are likely to be commenced very shortly after the election in May 2016. Schedule 1 lists all nine future departments under the titles they will carry from 2016. Schedule 2 repeals provisions in the Department's Northern Ireland Order 1999 as subsequently amended and in two other acts which added the names of departments to the Department's Order. It has the effect of removing references to the outgoing 12 department model. 
On the 8th of December 2015, a motion for the bill to be progressed by accelerated passage was debated in the Assembly, uh, with Junior Minister McCann and I having previously attended and gained the support of the Committee for the Office of First Minister and Deputy First Minister to the request. It is recognised during the accelerated passage debate, the progression of the bill, as with other Stormont House agreement matters, only became possible as a result of the consensus that had been reached on a fresh start a few weeks previously. We had moved immediately to have the bill introduced in the Assembly, consistent with the commitment to do so by the end of November 2015. There was only limited Assembly time available before dissolution in March 2016. The bill has to complete its passage in sufficient time for statutory processes, including the debate and affirmative motion relating to the separate transfer of functions order. Therefore, it was necessary for us to seek accelerated passage. The Assembly agreed and voted with cross-community support to allow the procedure. The accelerated passage debate was followed by the bill's second stage the same day. This suggested that there was broad support for the principles of the bill. No amendments were tabled at the Bill's consideration stage on the 19th of January 2016, and the Bill's clauses and schedules were voted unopposed to stand part of the Bill. The Bill's further consideration stage was taken yesterday when two ministerial amendments were agreed. These were purely technical adjustments needed to maintain consistency with the Public Services Ombudsman's Bill, which has now reached its concluding stages in the Assembly. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of those who have contributed through their support and through constructive debate in getting the bill to this point. It will help put into effect the decisions taken by the Executive on restructuring. The bill will create the framework for the most extensive reorganisation of the departmental system since 1999. Its passage at this time will help ensure a leaner, more streamlined and efficient administration from the outset of the new mandate. I commend this bill to this Assembly. And I call Mr Alec Maskey and I understand that you will be speaking on behalf of the committee for OFM DFM. I would like to first of all apologise on behalf of the chairperson and the deputy chairperson of the OFM committee. They were unable to attend this morning and I have been asked to speak on behalf of the committee. Um, I rise to speak on behalf of the Committee for the Office of the First and Deputy First Minister on the final stage of the Department Bill, and uh, I thank the Junior Minister for her opening remarks and welcome the final stage of the Bill. At our meeting on 30 November last, Junior Minister McCann and Junior Minister Pengali briefed the Committee on the Department's Bill and the rationale for seeking to progress the Bill through the Accelerated Passage Procedure. And has already been said during the brief meeting, uh, we heard that the reduction in the number of departments from 12 to 9 will provide for a leaner, more streamlined and efficient administration. For example, there will be fewer ministries, or fewer ministers, or fewer departmental hierarchies, as it has been described, not my word, um, permanent secretaries, central management units and press offices. The dissolution um, of three departments will involve the reallocation of their existing functions and there is to be some additional rearrangement of the functions of others. Members will be aware that those details are not dealt with by the Department's Bill. Instead, the reallocation of statutory functions will be provided for in a separate transfer of functions order. The Committee received a briefing on that draft order from departmental officials at its meeting on the 20th of, 27th of January. We obviously will, as a committee, give this matter further consideration at our meeting, along with comments from other statutory assembly committees. The committee aims to convey its views on the proposed order and, indeed, any views expressed by other committees to OFM DFM by 12 February, as requested. This bill before us uh, today, uh, therefore, pre last and the final stage, is simply, ask, is simply about dissolving three existing departments and renaming some others. While some members expressed concern at the lack of time to scrutinise the bill, it is fair to say that there was general support for the principles of this bill. And on behalf of the committee, I support the bill as tabled this morning. Carl <coughs> Call Mr. Paul for you. Uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, and, and I rise, of course, to support this uh, piece of legislation, uh, this bill, the uh, Department's bill. And again, as I've spoken earlier on this, uh, I think this is a good move. I think this is a, uh, a great thing for this Assembly, for this Government, and for the people of Northern Ireland. I do believe it will go some way to streamlining government. I hope that it goes some way to breaking down 
the silo mentality that we have in some of our ministers and some of our parties. I hope we will have, it will lead to a more streamlined, focused government, all going in the one direction, as opposed to what sometimes we have witnessed and experienced, whereby parties go uh, along their own way and have solo runs. But it will not happen without uh, ministers making hard decisions. And I think that I share a lot of frustration along with other members over the last number of years when we have seen, we have saw firsthand that whenever ministers do not make decisions, do not make hard decisions, that all of our people suffer. And we are here in this House, and ministers are in the executive, to make hard decisions. And that is something that I would like to see uh, happen more quickly and more efficiently. So I hope that this will not be the end. My party has fought hard, we have struggled long to get a reduction in numbers of MLAs and also a reduction in departments. We would like to go further, but we will bank what we have now in this mandate and we'll, we will move, move on accordingly. And we will not let up, our energy will not reduce in trying to meet the aims and objectives of the DUP in the, this regard. And we will push on to try and get to a point where we have a voluntary coalition with a proper opposition. I will leave it there, Mr Deputy Principal Speaker. Thank you very much, and I welcome the bill. Call Mr Andy Allen. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. The Ulster Unionist Party supports a reduction in the number of executive departments. We want to see a more effective, efficient and streamlined administration in Northern Ireland in order to deliver real change and make a positive difference to the lives of the people. We are content to support this bill, reducing the number of departments from 12 to 9, the biggest restructuring seen since 1999. It is a short bill, but it will be far-reaching in its implications and consequences. Its passage through the Assembly should be relatively uncontentious, and the real meat will be no doubt in the later stage when we come to debate the transfer of functions and decide what, exact, what the exact responsibilities should be of each department. That, however, is for another day, and we are content to support this bill. Mr Deputy Speaker, thank you. I call Mr Chris Little. Thank you, Mr Principal, Deputy Speaker. Uh, the Alliance Party has a, a long-standing manifesto commitment to support uh, the reduction of number of departments uh, on this occasion from 12 to 9 in time for the Assembly election in 2016. So we support uh, the bill and, and welcome its progress to final stage, um, hopefully for the reasons that it will introduce more efficient, effective government and it will allow us to make savings uh, that we can reinvest in better resourced public services for the uh, good of everyone in Northern Ireland. Um, and we also, however, believe that we do need to see uh, further legislation that could better uh, mandate cooperation and collaboration between all government departments. And as other MLAs have mentioned today, ultimately we need to see uh, more collaboration and better will between government ministers uh, to have truly effective power-sharing government uh, for the common good of everyone in Northern Ireland. Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, a number of MLAs have mentioned the importance of the transfer of functions order, which will deal with the uh, specific transfer of functions in addition to what we're dealing with today, which is the number of departments and, and the naming of departments. And I, I realise that's not for debate today, but if I can briefly put on record my concern in relation to the time that has been given to the consideration of the transfer of functions order that a number of MLAs have consistently mentioned as being the most significant part of this change. The OFM DFM committee was presented with the, transfer, the draft transfer of functions order on Wednesday the 27th of January, <coughs> giving us little over two weeks uh, to respond by the deadline of Friday the 12th of February. This is uh, in relation to something that a number of MLAs have referred to as the most extensive reorganisation of government in Northern Ireland since 1999, and yet we as MLAs are being given little over uh, two weeks 
to consider the detail of the transfer of functions order. I, I don't think that's acceptable. I think that's an extremely short period of time. There has been no public consultation in relation to the transfer of functions order. And I think MLAs and the relevant committees have a serious task ahead of them to respond robustly to that transfer of functions order, which will be led in the Assembly as an affirmative resolution. And we are given only the opportunity to yay or nay that particular transfer of functions order. That, that is not good government. That's not a fresh start to government. And we need to see changes to allow this Assembly and its committees to properly scrutinise uh, some, something of such significance. But we do welcome uh, the reduction uh, and the process of this stage of, of the bill, uh, and we will be supporting it today. Thank you. I'm happy to call Mr. Alex Atwood as next speaker, but he was not in his place when he ought to have been. Well, in this concession, this time. Okay, can I thank the deputy speaker for that concession. I apologise for the house, but uh, I was delayed upstairs at another meeting. Uh, um, uh, uh, just to make three or four uh, points. The first is, as everybody would uh, acknowledge, um, reduction of departments is only a reduction of departments. It is nothing more and it is nothing less. And it does not follow from the reduction of departments that we have efficient and effective government. What we have is less departments with more function. And you hope that because of that, and because of the uh, evolution of our democratic structures generally, that they will end up being more efficient and effective. But it does not follow that what we're doing today leads to anything, unless uh, the evidence is there over the next mandate to back it, to back it up. Um, in, in going with the reduction of MLAs, whenever that is happening, and with the reduction of departments, which is now happening, and we hope on the far side of a debate this afternoon, moving further to having in law an opposition in this chamber. We need to ensure that uh, we manage the internal democracy of the Good Friday Agreement in a way that does not put in jeopardy the reasons or some of the reasons why we had the Good Friday Agreement. And that whilst we may be changing systems and structures within government, uh, it is not the time, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, to go further down the road in the way some that would suggest, and we'll touch upon that this afternoon and in subsequent debates. Uh, another point of caution, of course, Mr uh, Deputy Speaker, has to be that my experience of uh, government for a while is that there will be people potentially populating higher levels of government who are going to be the management leadership in new departments who will already be arguing, and I've picked this up, who will already be arguing that given that we now have larger departments and more function, that we now have to leave that bed in. And that there is a risk, and as I say, I'm picking this up already, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that actually the bigger departments could lead in the short term to a degree of paralysis as do departments settle themselves and embed in in the wider life of government. And whilst there are many, many good officials, there is a tendency within uh, some management levels of government uh, to side on the air of caution and conservatism. And as I say, I make that point because I'm picking it up that in some places in government, at a senior management level, uh, the scale of what uh, senior managers are about to undertake in terms of having wider function and less departments is something that's already been used as, as an uh, argument to actually to tread slowly when actually the people of Northern Ireland are looking for government to tread boldly because too often in too many departments that has not been the character of devolution over the last 10 years. Could I concur with the point that Mr Little made? And it's going to be difficult to make this point because uh, uh, it's not really that relevant to today, but it is a related matter. And that is the issue that when the transfer of function order comes to this House, it's going to be an affirmative resolution, which means that you take it or leave it, and you will not have the opportunity to change it. And there are issues around the transfer of function order when it comes to individual departments that, uh, on the face of it, don't make much sense, yet we will not have the opportunity 
to amend it. That's just the nature of the democratic processes of this House, but we'll not have the opportunity to amend it. Indeed, when FM and DFM uh, officials brought to the attention of the committee, as Mr Little indicated last week, uh, uh, the processes around all of this, um, uh, the committee agreed, OFM DFM committee agreed, uh, uh, as far as I can recall, that individual parties would be given the opportunity to respond to what, are, what, are, what are may or may not be in the transfer of function order, rather than committees. That's uh, inevitably the consequence of doing all this work very quickly as we run down uh, to the end of this mandate. But what does that mean? We have a situation now arising, and this was touched upon in uh, question time yesterday, where significant functions of OFM DFM are going to the Department of Communities, but OFM DFM retain the power of appointment of the head of the public bodies that will be part of the uh, responsibility of other government departments. Uh, to name two, the appointment of the Commissioner for uh, Older People and the Children's Commissioner. The member give away. Yes. Would the member agree with me that in dismantling what is called the scaffolding of this place, there is a danger that we may well dismantle the structures which were embodied in the Good Friday Agreement and sought to give ownership of this place to the wider community through the Civic Forum and through other uh, institutions? And would the member agree with me that Stormont is not Wales, Scotland or England, where uh, democracy is quite different and we still need to embrace the widest possible support for these institutions, which to some degree are still in their infancy? And, and, uh, that I very much agree with what Mr Dallet said. And people should listen to Mr Dallet. He's about to leave this chamber. He's one of the most wise, uh, experienced and long-standing politicians in Northern Ireland. And those points should be, cautious, should be taken fully on board, not least, Mr Deputy Speaker, because the structures of the Good Friday Agreement um, that were, in our view, falsely changed in St Andrews and then further changed with the devolution of justice, the reasons and the sentiment and the principles behind those structures were born of decades of bad experience, bad politics and the denial of democratic standards to too many people in this part of Ireland. That's why those, those structures were created. And given that they were born and were a consequence of decades of misrule, then we should be careful about how far we go and how quick we go in changing those structures born of that experience, unless we're convinced that the current experience of our people and of parties and of government and of democracy in Northern Ireland is of such a nature that they should be changed. But, but in that regard, going back to the point I was uh, making before Mr uh, Dalit's intervention, we, this chamber, cannot change transfer functions order. And therefore, we're going to have to take it or leave it that when functions are going to one set of departments, FM, DFM retain the power of appointment of those senior public personnel. And at the committee, the officials could only name one example of why that was the case. Indeed, it was me who had to prompt the officials to remind them that there was actually at least one other case, namely the appointment of victims commissioner where the FM, DFM had that responsibility. So the point I'm making is why keep the power of appointment when you give lock, stock and barrel every other responsibility in that area of our life, namely the older person's uh, commissioner and the children's commissioner, you give that responsibility lock, stock and barrel to a different department. And you would wonder why that one power is retained by one office when everything else is given to the Department of Communities. Mindful, of course, that in the, uh, in the abortive negotiations on legacy matters, which the junior minister will be very, very familiar with, if there was something that seemed to be emerging, it was that FM and DFM wouldn't appoint the HIU director. 
So on one hand, it seems that FM and DFM and those negotiations or the DUP and Sinn Féin are moving away from having power of appointment, yet when it comes to transfer functions, they retain the power of appointment. I don't understand what that's all about. And maybe, if not today, sometime or other, the junior minister might want to uh, explain it or get our officials to explain it because uh, uh, they didn't seem to me to give a very convincing explanation when they were at committee. Call the junior minister Emma Pingeli to conclude and wind up on the final stage of the bill. I am grateful for the contributions that we have heard today, and I will deal with those before making my final remarks about the bill. I will attempt to clarify any queries which have been raised. I would highlight, however, I am not intending to get into the substance of the transfer of functions order issues, as those matters will have an opportunity to be aired in this chamber in due course. In relation to the comments by uh, Mr Alex Maskey, speaking on behalf of the Office of First Minister, Deputy First Minister Committee, um, I welcome the support of the committee and I also welcome the remarks from uh, Mr Andy Allen in relation to his support for further streamlining. I am very pleased to be able to stand here today to confirm the delivery of these measures that will help and support bringing about better streamlining of our departments. In relation to the range of other matters raised by my colleague Mr Paul Frew, by uh, Mr Chris Little and by Mr Alex Atwood, uh, turning uh, firstly to the comments by Mr Frew, I absolutely agree. This is a significant step, but it will only work with dedication and hard work. We need to break down the silos within departments and we need to push forward for a better way of working. In relation to the comments of Mr Little, again he echoed many of the sentiments in Mr Frews and Mr Atwood's comments. We absolutely agree that these measures are welcome and necessary, but it will not resolve everything. We have been very, very clear. We want to see better processes, we want to see better collaboration and cross-departmental cross-policy working. We want to see an increased focus on outcomes and ensuring that all we do focuses on improving people's lives but we also want a focus on delivering excellent public services for all. Today, and this piece of legislation and the reforms that we are bringing in are a critical and important step to making that happen. In relation to his specific points around the uh, transfer of functions order, as I've outlined, I'm not going to get into the detail of that. I understand that it was sent to the committee on the 19th, not the 27th of January, for consideration. And I would highlight to him that although there is some considerable detail in that order, it, it has been clear that there are only a small number of issues where people have a range of different views. And I suspect that the committee in due course will focus on those small range of issues. Uh, certainly the organisations involved in those, should they be arms length bodies or others, have communicated uh, their concerns or their issues and that actually brought about some changes already in relation to those up to the point of that transfer of orders, uh, f uh, transfer of functions order. Um, in relation to the specific comments by uh, Alex Atwood, um, you know, I can confirm to the member, and I know from my own experience of working with an, a couple of, of key policy areas, both as special advisor and as I am now a junior minister, uh, and those two examples would be both the uh, Delivering Social Change Agenda and the Social Investment Fund. Both of those big policy areas were cross-departmental. They had a number of different policy objectives touching on a number of different departments and agencies, and they were incredibly difficult to try to bring about because of that. You know, we have faced this in the Office of First and Deputy First Minister, but we are convinced that in order to find a new way of working, in order to bring about better outcomes and changes, this work must happen. It is worth the difficulties that we face, but it does require a change of culture, a change of culture in terms of officials, in the way departments do business, and also perhaps the way that the ministers uh, speak to each other, work with each other, in terms of bringing forward collaborative policies and initiatives with perhaps collaborative working in relation to funding. I would like to thank the members again for their contributions. The final stage debate on the department's bill and for the issues that they have raised. It is only a short bill, but it is one that will have significant implications for how our institutions do business in the future. 
Reform of the structures of government here is overdue. It is featured as a programme for government commitment since 2011. The Assembly and Executive Review Committee carried out a review in 2012 and identified areas of commonality broadly reflective of our current proposals. Together with the reduction in the numbers of MLAs, which we are also legislating for, it shows our commitment to a leaner, more efficient structure of government here. This is a good day for government in Northern Ireland. This is a good day for a better way of doing business, and it is a good day for delivery. The question is that the department's bill do now pass. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it.